I just uh, sold my house and I'm going to go travel around the world for a year. And I just want to say thanks for being an inspiration. I don't think you have to do a hard sell. I think by just doing what I do and showing people, you know, I, I, I do a lot of photography by showing them pictures of the world and talking about the places I've been, that provides inspiration in and of itself. And I don't need to beat people over the head with it. Now, do you, do you also get emails from people that say, okay, I'm in, I love what you're doing. I want to do it. I don't have a house. I'm a, a 25 something. I just don't have a lot of cash. You know, is there any advice that you can give me so I can make some kind of automated income that Tim Ferriss talks about to be able to do this? It's just, it's a money block issue for me. Do, do those questions come up? And if they do, how do you handle them? They do. And I don't, you know, if somebody can set up a system where they're making money online, that's great. Uh, but if they want to start traveling now, I would suggest they get a job working on the road, teach English, do something like that. Um, it's certainly much quicker to get going. You'll have money flowing in right away. And while you're doing that, you can try projects. Now, have you actually worked over the last three or four years? And when I say work, I mean like doing something like you just mentioned. No. You haven't. Uh, no, I've had enough money saved up and I focus solely. In fact, if you go to my website, you won't even find any advertisements. Uh, I've not even monetized my website, even though I've had, I've had months where I've had a quarter million uniques just because I've been focusing just on building an audience. Is that a plan down the road once you hit a certain level? Yeah, I'm almost there. I'll be releasing an iPhone app in 2011. So what's the biggest question? I hope later 2011. Okay. What's the biggest question that you get asked? Because I'm sure you get asked all the time. What, what is that? What's my favorite place? <laughs> yeah, I get asked that one too. I hate that one. I, my, my answer is always the next one. What's yours? Uh, I say that asking me my favorite place is like asking a mother what her favorite child is. <laughs> you just can't answer it. Yeah. What's the, what's the one question that you just hate it when you get it? Oh, probably the same question. The same what's question. What's my favorite place? Yeah. So if someone wanted to set out on this journey and, and they were just afraid but they needed a little bit of a push to do it. What advice would you give them now that you've got three years under your belt here? You know, do something. Take some act. Maybe it's selling off some stuff. Maybe it's taking a, a spontaneous trip somewhere. And it could be as simple as going to Des Moines, you know, or someplace as boring as that without a hotel reservation. That might be scary to some people to show up someplace unprepared, but just do it and see what happens. How have you changed, you know, personally? In other words, if, if I met you three, three years ago and we were friends back then and, you know, I hadn't seen you in a while and three years later we met again, what, what would be different about who you are? Um, I, I don't think I've changed that much. This, this was never intended to be some sort of spiritual journey for me. And I know a lot of people travel for that reason, but that was never why I did it. If anything, I did it more as an intellectual thing, just to learn. Uh, because wherever you're in a new place, you're always learning something else. Uh, I'm probably much more patient than I was before. Um, when you have to deal with flight delays or mistranslations or things like that, you just sort of learn to take it all in stride after a while. Mm -hmm. And my sense of time is certainly a lot different. How so? I, you know, you think of things in terms of weeks or months now. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you're living at home, every day is kind of the same. So I realized, you know, I'm going to be here for a week. I have certain things to do. I'll be here next month. When I meet people, I meet people on the road. And, if, and sometimes I'll meet them in different places. And I don't usually remember when I met them. I remember where I met them. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back to living in one spot? No. Uh, in fact, my, my stated goal is not to get rich off this. It's simply to just be able to keep doing it for the rest of my life. At some point, I could see myself maybe getting an apartment, but I'll certainly be traveling for nine or ten months out of the year. Does it become difficult when you're in a spot for a while and you make friends that you you know become more meaningful? Is it difficult to leave them? Uh, it's not so bad. I met a lot of friends when I was in Bangkok, but uh, I'm in touch with them all the time online. And I think that's one of the great things about the Internet. If you had asked me that question maybe 20 years ago, it might have been a different story. But today, you can keep in touch with people no matter where you are. Now, now the Brits have a term for it. They call it a gap year. But we don't have anything like that in the States. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think there's a lot of pressure to get into a school when you're in high school. Once you're in school, 
you have a lot of pressure to graduate as quickly as you can because it's expensive. And once you get out of school, you have debt. So you need to start paying it off. So there isn't usually an opportunity to have that gap year. Mm. So in other words, the Brits don't have the debt load that we do with college, so they can afford to backpack for a year, et cetera. Right. And I, you know, there are also maybe cultural reasons uh, that have to do with you know, the English colonies and uh, having more people stationed overseas for longer periods of time. It's a much more common thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when Americans go overseas for business or even if they were in the military, it's usually a very short stint and then they come back right away. Now, you're originally from – you you lived in Seattle. Is that right? No. I lived in uh, Minneapolis for almost 20 years before I started traveling and I'm originally from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay. Do you – during the holidays, Christmas, et cetera, birthdays or whatever, do you ever come home to visit family? Uh, in the last year or so I have. Uh, I spent actually quite a bit of time in Wisconsin this year. My father was in the hospital and he passed away this summer. So I was in the States for, I don't know, about four months. And I've been trying to come back, you know, between trips just to be there for my mom and my family. Mm -hmm. How much do you sketch out your trips? Are they sketched out, you know, over the next year? Do you know where you're going to be or do you just kind of do it every month or so? I, I don't really have a clue. I, you know, I might be in Thailand again. This medical tourism thing is actually a contest. And the winner of the contest is determined by the amount of blog traffic they get. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a good chance I might win. Uh, so if that happens, I may end up getting another flight to Bangkok in January. And then I plan on going to the LA Times Travel Show in February. And then I plan on going to South by Southwest in March. And then I have a invite to go to Puerto Rico sometime in February. And then there's a cruise and a trip to Spain. Uh, there's a cruise from like Venice to Barcelona around Italy that I might be doing in May and some other things. So that, that's really all I have planned so far. So what's the reason for going to the LA Times travel show in South by Southwest? Is it to sort of make a presence there or is there more of a stated goal? Uh, South by Southwest is pretty much just for the experience of going to South by Southwest. Right. Uh, the, the LA Times travel show is actually more of a consumer oriented show, but a lot of the uh, destinations that the people involved with marketing destinations are there. And while the travel industry is waking up to bloggers and social media, they haven't been very fast about it. So what I want to do is just to go there and introduce myself to some people and, and make them aware of my site. Is there any particular place that you've been that you just didn't want to leave where you said, my God, this is just so beautiful. I love it. I just, you know, I just want to stay. Oh, there's been lots of places like that. Um, I'm a very big fan of a lot of the islands in the Pacific, many of which nobody ever goes to because they're, it's rather difficult to get to. It's a long flight, uh, usually kind of expensive. But, the, you know, the weather's nice. The people are nice. Uh, it's very easy. I mean, there's a reason why everybody ends up going to Thailand mm -hmm. because the people are nice and it's cheap and they have a relatively good infrastructure for a place that that's cheap. It's not, you know, a third world country, but it's not really a first world country either. So it has some of the benefits of, of both. Gary, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time with us today. And if people want to get a hold of you, What's the best way for them to do it if they want to follow you? Is it uh, Twitter, Facebook, or what is it? Uh, just go to my website. Uh, it's everything-everywhere.com. If you don't put in the dash, you're going to go to a UK mobile phone company. <laughs> they, they, they just picked the name. T-Mobile and Orange merged earlier this year, and they picked the name Everything Everywhere. But yeah, if you go to my website, you'll find links for RSS, email, Twitter, everything, Facebook. Awesome. Well, Gary, thanks again. Well, thanks for having me. That's it for this episode of the Lifestyle Design Confessions podcast. Remember, if you want to get a jump start on creating the income to live your jet set life using our proven system, you can claim your risk-free trial membership to Jet Set Money by going to getjetsetmoney.com. And remember, excuses are over. It's time to live. Yeah.